Okay, I want to try a little bit different style of video here. I've had a number of questions about model setup, both in terms of what materials I use to produce the layer packs and also the, the apparatus I use to deform them uh, in the videos you see on this page. Uh, I want to speak mostly uh, about the materials and how they interact with the floor or the base of the apparatus in this video. To me, that's the most important part in making what I would consider a, a realistic fold thrust belt style of, of model. Uh, in other words, one that will compare well to features that you might see in published cross-sections or in, in Google Earth or something like that. Uh, most of the models on the page were made using the apparatus you see here. Uh, the frame is aluminum, the sidewall is glass, this long screw or worm gear uh, is turned to move the backstop forward and backwards there. Uh, this has been a very good apparatus, but right now, if you look closely, you can see the floor has become very scratched and scored uh, from the amount that it's been used. That's very bad for, for making a good model. The layer pack uh, tends to essentially stick or get caught up in those, those scratches and gouges in the floor of the box. That produces a lot of friction, and that's not very good for making a, a quality full thrust belt model. So, while this rig is out of commission, it will need to be polished or the floor of it will need to be covered with some other material. I've been using this simpler rig, which works in my mind equally well or even better. Uh, simple construction, just a plexiglass wall here, it's very thin, just a few millimeters thick, and a plate of plexiglass on the floor of the rig. Now the actual base here is a pine board probably about a centimeter and a half thick, but the layer pack does not actually come into contact with the wood. It sits on this plate of plexiglass here, and when the indenters move, that layer pack can slide very, very easily uh, across that plexiglass. Now, sometimes when this plexi is shipped and purchased, it's covered with, with an adhesive backing, which I, I presume is some sort of protective backing. Once that's removed, that can leave a sticky film on the plexiglass, which produces a great deal of friction with the layer pack. That has to be removed, and I actually use some of my favorite granular material I'm about to show you to pour onto the plexiglass and actually rub and abrade some of that sticky residue away. Uh, that, of course, does not scratch the plexi. It does remove that residue, and the end result is an extremely smooth surface over which the layer pack slides very readily. So my favorite material and one that's central to all the models on this page is what you see here, uh, a form of cornmeal that is available in Kroger grocery stores here on the east coast of the U.S. Now, I know we have a lot of international viewers. Uh, that doesn't help you very much, but certainly you don't have to have this particular cornmeal to, uh, to make a decent model. What you do need to do to make a good model is to be sure that you have a very smooth, base or floor to your rig and that you select a granular material that is going to slide very easily across that floor and hopefully right now I'll be able to demonstrate to you what this would look like. This is essentially a, a materials test run if you will so I'm not developing any kind of stratigraphy here. We've added some of the material there. We'll look down from the top. So as I advance the indenter here, you can see some big anaclines forming. But right there, you can see that from the base of the wedge, the toe of the wedge is all the way out here. So if we look at this from the side, this is a very, very broad but thin mobile wedge. So all of that material is sliding across the plexiglass and has assumed this very very low surface taper because in fact it slides so easily. Now if there were more friction between this layered material and the plexiglass the wedge would be very thick and it would be very short and in a sense tectonically speaking it would not look particularly realistic. Uh, certainly a, a fundamental aspect of fold thrust belts uh, and indeed low angle thrust vaulting the world over is the fact that large masses of rock uh, slide along basal detachments uh, in in geometry, something like you see here, essentially very broad but very thin, and that's thought to be a product of basal fault zones, or any fault zone for that matter, being extremely weak 
with respect to the, uh, the material that is sliding along it. So in a sense, you, you want to try to duplicate that. Okay, so that wedge geometry in my mind is a good one, and that's something I look for when I am mixing or blending materials to use in contact with whatever material uh, may be used to make the apparatus I'm using at a, at a given moment. So you would want to produce a geometry like that in this device as well. That's not really possible uh, given the scratching here. Okay, this scales up very nicely. Uh, this is a larger model that was produced in a class yesterday. This one actually utilizes colored sand uh, along with the cornmeal. There's a scale card. That arrow is 10 centimeters. Box of the same construction, plexiglass with a board base. Uh, works equally well. It's bigger, but the end result is, again, uh, a very broad but thin wedge with a low surface taper. Now, this was a uh, was eroded intensely while it was shortening, so it produces a pretty interesting uh, faulting pattern there, but it operates in the same way as the one I've just shown you. Okay, so regardless of what your granular material is, regardless of what your apparatus is made of, you just want to try to find some kind of material to produce walls and a floor along which the granular material will slide very easily to produce a wedge of a geometry, something like that. And also, you want to try to eliminate drag along the wall. You'll see that these big anaclines and the surface traces of the thrusts do not bend backwards against the wall. So this section is not stuck to this wall as it's sliding along. Uh, there's very little friction with the walls, also very little with the floor, and that produces uh, a very good end result, particularly, of course, when there's a stratigraphy developed in here, uh, which allows you to track the deformation, okay? So, bottom line, you want the layer pack to slide with extreme ease across the floor of the rig and also against the walls. Uh, of course, glass will work for that as well. Plexi is just available around here. Uh, I presume there's many granular materials uh, I've never tried uh, you know, microbeads or cinospheres or anything like that. I imagine they would probably work equally well here, but ultimately I think you just need to experiment and try to adjust your construction and layer pack to end up with a result that's going to look something like you see here. Okay, so I hope that's somewhat helpful. Uh, hope to follow this up again with a few additional setup videos, but that gives you somewhere to start. Okay, thanks.